Hi guys! So I am so excited again to be back for the second day in a row and I promised you guys that I was going to upload a video, another read aloud from section one of my book, Shaken to Become Unshaken. I really hope you guys enjoyed the very first chapter of my book that I read aloud to you guys in the previous video. Let me know if you guys have any questions, if you guys want to hear anything else, if you guys just want to hear more. Let me know in the comments if you guys enjoyed that. But yes, let's get into it. I'm super excited. So this is what we went over yesterday. And section one, past research, who am I? And that went up to page six. So we read that yesterday. And today we're going to start on childhood. There is one, two, three, four more chapters in section one. And we're going to read from childhood. One day, my daughter was telling my mom how I was going to paint her hair purple, pink, and gold for her birthday. I planned to get colored natural hair wax that washes out easily. When I was a young girl, my mom was strictly against adding anything to your body that you weren't born with. So when my daughter told my mom what color she would color her hair, my mom thought she meant permanent hair dye. My mom was in shock, so I quickly informed her that it was washable colored hair wax. Then we got into the discussion of our different beliefs from when I was growing up. She told me how I was often rebellious and I told her how I thought she was controlling at times. This got me thinking about parental views of life versus a child's view of life. Growing up, I relied on my parents' judgment for validation and life's decisions. I read a lot of books growing up. In fact, I learned most of life experiences through books lack of life experience means no growth. I grew up very sheltered. When it was time for me to leave home, I was thrown into the world naive and overwhelmed. I developed social anxiety. I didn't trust anyone. I didn't even share secrets with my sisters. My mom was very much a mama bear who protected me from negative experiences or people. In my research, I learned about boundaries and how I didn't have them. It was harder for me to acknowledge the terms, no, I don't like that, or this is what I want to do. It was hard for me to trust myself, therefore, I did not take control or ownership of my life. I learned that I needed to have more confidence. I was at a point where I had to learn what it was like in this world by myself, attached to no relationships. I relied on my own guidance. Many people know things, but at this point I was certain and I've confirmed my life wasn't one of those things many people know. I've questioned and second guessed myself my whole life. I was taught how to follow the rules, but I didn't know that I could be the one that makes the rules. You can't take on the whole world, but you can take on your world one day at a time. Growing up, my mom wanted to make sure her kids had everything they ever needed. If we didn't, then she'd figure out a way. She did that for years. She had to be in control and run her household. Sometimes she may have been over the top, but for the most part, I was used to her being in control. You know that saying, moms knows best. I went to my mom for a lot of life's questions. That's what moms are for to be your guide to help you in life. But when I started my research, I realized that there's a lot about my life that my mom doesn't know. I didn't grow up telling her my secrets, even as an adult. So I started thinking it was time for me to answer my own life's questions. I was falling, tripping, and stumbling in life because I kept expecting someone to catch me or lead the way I needed to stop asking others for directions and advice. I realized what I wanted to know was in me. I had been relying on people who were not even on the same journey as me to help me. I didn't get out much growing up. Other than school, I never had much of a social life. Even in school, I was the kid the teacher had to call on because I didn't talk. I had friends, of course, but I kept my circle of friends small. I was a very shy child in school and especially anywhere there were a lot of people. I was never shy with family, of course, but I always kept a diary. How many 
15 movies are there with children living secret lives? It depends on the parenting style and the relationship between parent and child when it comes to how a child will turn out as an adult in society. Have conversations with your children. Treat them as adults when it comes to respect, privacy, and boundaries. Talk to them about what's going on in their heart and mind. This doesn't have to be a heart-to-heart -heart sentimental conversation. It could be just a day-to-day -day conversation about their school project, friends, stress, and their passions. Just in conversation, passing by the kitchen before going upstairs to watch your movie. Maybe ask to watch a movie together to initiate conversation. Talking to your children is important. As a parent, you think you know your child because you birthed them. They were a part of you and you are raising them, so surely they should have the same belief systems as you. But as a parent, you have to think of raising your child as getting to know them. Their brains are developing and they're coming into their own personality. Talk to them as you would try to get to know someone you don't know as they are growing. Talk to them about life skills and the things happening in the world. That's important because someone else in this world may teach them the hard way. You want them to learn from you, relate an experience in your life to things in their life. Tell your children your feelings. It's okay not to be perfect. Don't go as far as complaining about bills to your children because bills and the grocery receipt should not concern a child. They should know the value of money and why it's important, but the parent's responsibility to pay the electric bill that night. It takes much skill and love to be a parent. You really have to love yourself. Raising human beings is a delicate process. Many do it, but many need guidance. In my research, I write about different points in my life growing up with my mom. I learned a lot about her mindset in raising three girls with my dad. Growing up, my parents always made sure to support whatever their children wanted to do. If they didn't agree with my life decision, they'd tell me by giving me other ideas. But they always took the time to listen and hear my plan out. They've always been my biggest supporters. When I'm excited about a new project I'm working on in life, then they get excited. When I accomplish something, they make sure to throw a party. That's how it's always been. Once it was time to grow up and be an adult, you know, raise children, work a career, get into a relationship and socialize with all of their friends and families, I realized I needed to back up and figure out what I was missing in my life or what I needed to find to feel normal. As an adult, I felt alone. My shyness and tight-lipped attitude did me no justice in this cruel world. And so I got walked over, talked over, and overshined. Before my research, I thought I just didn't shine enough, but now I know. I've always shined bright. I just didn't know my own power. For years, I let others dim my shine because they were blinded by it or I dimmed my own shine to fit in. For the longest, I didn't want to shine because I didn't like the way my shine shined or because I simply didn't attempt to put myself out there to grow. I had to do that. Because when it was time to venture off into the world, I rather stumbled than walked. When you're thrown out into the world and you don't stick the landing, it could be overwhelming. This is when depression, anxiety, and other disorders are bound to happen. I dealt with depression and anxiety as a child. It grew with me as I became an adult. And I'm going to stop it right here, you guys. And I'm going to pick up tomorrow. So that was childhood. And I'm going to pick up on sexuality. There's one, two, three more chapters in this section. And it's only literally three pages. So I'm going to finish for you guys tomorrow. I hope you guys are enjoying these read alouds. Let me know if you want to hear more. This is a book that I cherish so much because even when I read it back, um, to myself and just reflect on it. I am able to just reconnect 
with myself of where Jana is now, who Jana was, where Jana is, and where Jana is going. And I'm able to make those connections through this book because it's a reminder. Um, when I actually wrote this book, I was still a little bit hurt and I was I was still dealing with a little bit of the hurt from some of my past struggles but um, reading it back now and just you know going through the book I, I usually go through the book ever so often just to see like okay does this still hurt me okay um, what happened here does this still pain me and I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys yes it does sometimes but I'm going to continue to read my book because it helps me to be the absolute best version of myself. And it's not just about being the best version of myself, but it's about loving the worst version of myself. It's about hugging that version of myself that was lost and felt betrayed and who was, you know, too sensitive and who was someone who was just drowning and you know her thoughts and depression and anxiety and and overwhelmed with her day to day and had so much confusion in her life so this helps to keep me accountable for myself and it helps me to stay on my journey okay it helps me to continue to stay on my journey and to just look back and see like wow <laughs> this was my life a couple years ago you know and to look at where i'm at now it's a beautiful, beautiful journey that is just coming along and I'm just journeying along. And I want this to be a guide for someone else. Um, if something speaks to you in this, please let me know because I love, I love to know like what speaks to you, like what speaks to your heart? Like how can I connect with you? So I'm sharing my journey with you guys. If you guys wanna share your journey with me, please, because um, let's be accountability partners in our life's journey okay and i want you guys to look at your success i want you to process and i want you to stay blessed okay always those three things